Hi Logic Language Learners, I hope you are all really well. Can I remind you first and foremost, sorry I've just washed up so I'm just putting some <laughs> some cream on my hands. Um, I've never been one of those people that can wear uh, marigolds or woolly gloves. Um, uh, this shit's the bomb by the way. Palmer's, but the natural one. No, um, no fragrance, no mineral oil. Amazing. Yeah, I rub it on my face. I do everything with it. It's brilliant. It's really good. Right, so. Can I remind you that the podcasts are still available to support our Ukraine little mission? Um, uh, one person ordered them and specifically said, can you not make the donation to the Ukraine? Which I respect politically. I really, really do. But by and large, if you order them, they are primarily an A-level revision podcast. They do a lot of fantastic grammar. And if you don't want the money given to the Ukraine thing, I respect your opinions. That's all fine. Good. So this is quite an advanced video. But if your mission is genuinely to really seriously speak French, then this is something you need to see. I'm going to make sure throughout this video that I reference other videos that you should be watching. Okay. Uh, if you don't understand some things that we've done uh, that I reference along the way. Also, um, I'm going to pop the subtitles on this video so that uh, I might end up having to write all the stuff out in the description. But if I pop the subtitles on in French, it will then give you gobbledygook random shit for the English. But when I say the French, you'll have it all written underneath because for once it might help you with the written. So what are we talking about? This is a technique that you might have heard mention. You might have heard somebody mention in one of the live classes which goes online. So um, I tend to pop um, classes with Nina, Maggie and Susan and often Jason, Lachlan or other visiting guests um, uh, on a Friday. And they're all doing fabulously, as many of you have said. And so we are mentioning this process in this class quite a lot. So I just want to make sure that everybody's up and running with this. So what am I talking about? So the first video you need to have seen uh, to watch this video is a series of videos called The Game. Now, The Game is when you practice that you know a tense, that you know all 10 up until that point, 10 tenses of any verb with any person. So this might be completely new for some of you and this might be completely old and boring uh, for others. So the game as standard is using a person with their verb in present, was, will, would subjunctive, then present, was, will, would subjunctive on the auxiliary. So rather than saying Somebody's having a shower, that's great. Wrong time to use the taps, never mind, it's a bit noisy. So rather than saying present tense, imperfect tense, future simple, uh, conditional, subjunctive, passé composé, uh, plus perfect, plus que parfait, future past or conditional past, and then the subjunctive past, which just gets a bit of a mouthful, we say present, was, will, would subjunctive, uh, present, was, will, would subjunctive on the middle. For example, he does, il fait, he was doing, il faisait, he will do, il fera, he would do, il ferait. Subjunctive, it's, in, you know, it's interesting, he does it, whatever, you know, I'm happy he does it, je suis content qu'il le fasse. Versus, il a fait, il... No, let's get, do, let's do one without the le. So, yeah, um, he, so, il fait, il faisait, il fera, um, il ferait, qu'il fasse. Il l'a fait, il avait fait, il aura fait, il aurait fait, qu'il ait fait. And if you don't understand what those 10 are, okay, in the significance of the fact that the top five have no auxiliary and the bottom five have an auxiliary, then can I really specifically ask you to stop this video and click on the links underneath for the game videos, okay? Um, because really there is no better way to make sure that you know a verb is to pick a person and to run through it in all 10. Things I would remind you to do if you are new to the game video is A, enjoy them, B, notice that uh, the top five have no auxiliary, the bottom five have an auxiliary. So in the top five, you are changing one word. The second, the bottom five, you are changing the auxiliary word. And the auxiliary method will only ever be the same of avait, 
with uh, uh, ave ora ore a subjunctive or you know the verb to be so a et a sora sore soi for example but enough about that because if you're now watching this video from this point onwards you've watched that video and you get it okay you understand what we're saying if you've done the games video properly you should have played with that and some pronouns so for example if you or, or, and also some uh, some adverbs so for example if you brought in for example he uh, let's say he eats okay so let's say you played with he eats it so il le mange il le mange et il le mangera il le mangera c'est bizarre qu'il il, ouais, il est bizarre qu'il le mange c'est bizarre qu'il le mange il a il la mange il avait mangé il aura mangé il aurait mangé c'est bizarre qu'il ait mangé whatever's going on um, you'll notice that the pronoun doesn't move for any of our 10 there. So top five and the bottom five. You'll notice that the pronoun doesn't move. That could be one or two pronouns. So I give it to her. Alors je le lui donne, je le lui donnais, je le lui donnera, je le, pardon, je le lui donnerai, je le lui donnerai. C'est bizarre que je le lui donne. Je le lui ai donné, je le lui avais donné, je le lui aurais donné. C'est bizarre que je le lui ai donné. Whatever version of the 10 it is, the, the pronouns won't change. Now that goes for whether you have created a sentence where you've happened to put pronouns together or whether you've used a phrasal verb where the pronouns are in place, like for example, je m'en vais. So for example, il s'en va, il s'en allait, il s'en ira, il s'en irait, voilà, c'est bizarre qu'il s'en aille, il s'en est allé, il s'en était allé, il s'en serait allé, il s'en serait allé, oui, il s'en serait allé without the link, um, c'est bizarre qu'il s'en soit allé. Again, if you don't understand any of those, watch the video. So what is absolutely standard as a golden rule in this whole system is that pronouns do not move when you have all of those 10 systems. The only time we are going to move a pronoun in French is when we have, as per our little song, bits before verbs except before infinitive, when you have an infinitive. Now if you have a simple standard pronoun, let's look at that then. So Il mange, il, il le mange, il le mange et il le mangera, le, 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 il le, il le, il le. He's going to eat it. Il va le manger. OK? He, um, he washes himself. Il se lave, il se lave, il se lavera, il se lavera. C'est bizarre qu'il se lave, il s'est lavé, il s'est lavé, il se sera lavé. Um, il se sera lavé. Um, C'est bizarre qu'il se soit lavé. Il va se laver. So if you have two pronouns, be it mon, ton, son, nous en, vous en, lui en, me, t, si, le lui, la lui, you know, les leur, any, you know, combination of two pronouns. Now, notice when I'm talking about pronouns, I'm talking about object pronouns, direct, indirect, and reflexive, which go in the middle of the sentence. I'm not talking about the subject pronoun like je, tu, il, elle. So when you have those, there is not a version of French. This is really important for what, what we're about to head into. There is not a version of French where those if there were two of them, would be divided. So, for example, if I said the verb to get out of here is son aller, je m'en vais, there is not a version of that verb where the mon will come apart. So, je m'en vais, je m'en allais, je m'en irais, je m'en irais, c'est bizarre que je m'en aille, je m'en suis allé, je m'en étais allé, ou je m'en étais allé, je m'en serais allé, je m'en serais allé, ou je m'en serais allé, without the pronunciation. C'est bizarre que je m'en sois allé, je m'en sois allé, mm, bit heavy. Um, je vais m'en aller, or as we're going to talk about, après mon, être allé. So there's not a version of these verbs anywhere where if you have a double pronoun within your construction that you are going to separate it, okay? So that's the really, you know, big point. So um, uh, we also play in the game with adverbs. So for example, il le parle bien, il le parle bien, il le parle bien, il le parlera bien, il le parlera bien. Euh, c'est bizarre qu'il parle bien, il a bien parlé, il avait bien parlé, il aura bien parlé, il aurait bien parlé, qu'il ait bien parlé, voilà, qu'il ait bien parlé, whatever. So we play with adverbs as well. So that now brings us on to the concept of a 12 uh, item lineup rather than a, um, a 10 item lineup. So often when students are doing quite well, and I think that they're mastering those 10, Okay, also can I quickly remind you the subjunctive formally isn't a tense, it's a mood, but pff, whatever, it's another conjugation. So when you've got those going on, I often then say, right, make sure you've practiced these verbs with an infinitive. So I normally make them say, especially phrasal verbs, 
Like, I resent him. Je lui en veux, je lui en voulais, je lui en voudrais, je lui en voudrais, bizarre que je lui en veuille. Je lui en ai voulu, je lui en avais voulu, je lui en aurais voulu, je lui en aurais voulu, c'est bizarre que je lui, en, euh, je lui en ai voulu. Je vais lui en vouloir. I make somebody get comfortable with the infinitives. We need to acknowledge several things when we talk about the infinitives as a practice method. The first point, which is really, I know we're on a previous first point of things to do with this whole thing, but I'm coming into a subcategory and it's got its own first point. So if you've got infinitives to play with, okay, I'm telling you now, I'm giving you an advance on the video, and you've probably seen this in the title, that there is a version of all verbs where you conjugate them with the auxiliary uh, as an infinitive, rather than the main verb as an infinitive. So to jump ahead, if you think we've so far done five tenses, or four, you know, four tenses in a subjunctive, with no auxiliary, and then four ten five tenses or four tenses in a subjunctive with an auxiliary, we're now going to say present, was, will, would, subjunctive, and an infinitive with no auxiliary, and present, was, will, would, subjunctive with uh, and an auxiliary in, on, on the infinitive, with an infinitive auxiliary. So we have infinitive, no auxiliary, infinitive on the auxiliary. And you might go straight away, what the f is an infinitive, an infinitive on the auxiliary? It's when your have or your be verb is in the infinitive, and then after that you have the past participle. I will say that again. It is when your have or your be verb, your auxiliary in the middle, the have and be verbs, avoir or être, is in the two, the two form, the long form, and then after which you will have the ending, the past participle. So normally when you first stop playing with infinitives, you get used to popping the infinitive at the end. So, je vais danser, I'm going to dance. Uh, you know, uh, Marcus veut venir, Marcus wants to come. Um, we then play with mul multiple infinitives, multiple. So like he wants to, um, um, he's going to have to come. Il va devoir venir. Um, we then play with infinitives where you sometimes have an, a preposition required. So il va devoir continuer à venir or il va essayer de venir. We play with th this as well. But we have models in French, which is what this video is about, where the auxiliary, the word in the middle, is in the two form, not the verb at the end. And this is particularly pertinent because, as you know from our little ditty, bits before verbs except before the infinitive. So, in other words, little pronouns will go before all your verbs unless you have a, a two form, a long form, in which case they will go before the two form. Side note, the last two form, if you had multiples. So if I then, for example, said after eating, when it's the same person, I'm now going to say stop to master all of this system. Make sure you are completely comfortable with why the following are the case. If you understand after he left, he closed the door. If you understand that because that is the same person, it will use an infinitive. Après être parti, il a bien fermé la porte as opposed to after he left, I closed the door, après qu'il est parti, moi j'ai bien fermé la porte. If you understand avant, before he left, avant qu'il soit parti, or avant qu'il ne soit parti, I closed the door. Before, you know, before, um, before leaving, he closed the door, avant de partir, Whatever, as long as, you, if you understand the different après, après que, avant, avant que, après avoir, après être, avant que, après que, if you understand all the rules around those, you're safe to carry on. If you're not, that will be as a bundle underneath as well, okay? But I'm not going to go over that again in this video. Shout out to Lachlan, who will be watching those videos this week, or I will king rip him a new one. Good. <laughs> Talent is great, but if you don't work with the talent, it just doesn't do anything. All right. Trust me. So, going ahead then. We are establishing the following points. That you are going to be using all verbs, whether they are phrasal verbs, whether they are going to have all these little extra bundles of extra little ingredients to make up meaning, or whether they are just things that you've happened to put together. There are formats of these in French where you are going to use the infinitive on its own, or you are going to use the infinitive 
um, on the auxiliary. So let me just give you an example straight away. So for example, if you said he gets washed, all right? So he, he gets washed, present, il se lave, he was getting washed, il se lave, he will get washed, il se lavera, he would get washed, il se lavera, um, you know, whatever, I'm happy he's getting washed, je suis content qu'il se lave, subjunctive, sounds the same in the present, he got washed, il s'est lavé, he had gotten washed, il s'était lavé, he will have gotten washed, il se sera lavé, he would have gotten washed, il se serait lavé, it's interesting, he got, whatever, I'm happy he got washed, je suis content qu'il se soit lavé. If you then said he is going to get washed, il va se laver, notice you are now in your infinitive including, including the, um, the reflexive bit with it. Okay, so the infinitive there is no auxiliary, it's just se laver. There's no have or be, I mean unless the main verb was have or be on its own, but there's no auxiliary have and be, just the main infinitive with whatever bags and tricks, it, you know, it came with, you know, whistles, bracelets, any accessories. So, for example, se rendre compte, yeah, would be to realise, which comes with bits of crap around it. Son aller would be to get out of there, you know, son aller would be to get out of there, as opposed to s apostrophe envoler, s'envoler, which would be to fly away. So, all of these verbs are just verbs where you are using the pronouns and the main verb with no auxiliary. But if I then wanted a version where I wanted to pop the infinitive in the auxiliary, my auxiliary would be avoir or être, and all of my pronouns, whatever they are, will go before my avoir or my être, be it ce, be it me, be it le lui, be it whatever. So for example, if I said to get washed, se laver, if I wanted it in the auxiliary infinitive method, it would be s'être laver. Because I got washed, je me suis lavé. You know that if you use a verb which is reflexive in the past, the auxiliary is to be. So, s'être lavé. We'll talk about how we use it in just a moment. If it's son aller, to go away, and let's say I used it with a tu. So, you're going to go away. Tu vas ton aller. The reflexive past version of this, the auxiliary infinitive, would be ton être Aller, and the word which comes after your avoir or your être will be in the past participle. I know it sometimes sounds like it's the infinitive, but it will be the past. So, for example, um, to eat it. So, il va le manger. Yeah, pronoun le, verb manger. The auxiliary infinitive version is le avoir mangé, l'avoir mangé. Let's look at where we would use these. So, if we did, you know, um, after, so before eating it, avant de le manger, avant de le manger. After eating it, après l'avoir mangé. So you need a form where you need to be able to, you know, do the auxiliary infinitive. Without can do both. Without, I'm going to do it without eating it. Moi je vais le faire sans le manger. Don't worry, I'm capable of going, you know, uh, doing the washing up in the kitchen. The cake, now that cake is on the table, Luke, don't eat it. It's got gluten in it, you'll be sick. That's okay, I'm capable of being in the kitchen without eating it. Ouais, je suis bien capable d'être là sans le manger. I'm not going to go out without having eaten it, as in without having tried some, don't you worry, sans l'avoir mangé. Okay? I'm not, you know, um, I am, I could, he could spend the whole day, I won't say it about myself because I like a shower, he can't spend the whole, I, he could spend the whole day without getting washed, generally, he could spend the whole day without getting washed, sans se laver, without getting washed. I would never go out wi without having gotten washed, sans mettre lavé. I need a version, so sans can do the version with the normal infinitive, any pronouns coming before. So it sometimes helps just to strip it back, if you just think, What's the version of a verb on its own? So, without dancing, sans danser, without leaving, sans partir. What's, you know, after having danced, après avoir dansé, there's the auxiliary version, without having left, après être parti. Okay, so we do have these versions. So, merci is another great one. Merci, if you said merci de plus an infinitive with no auxiliary, it's kind of like saying, could you please do this? 
So, you know, please give it me. Merci de me le donner. Merci de me le donner. So I'm going to lend you my umbrella. Okay, so please give it me, you know, when you're finished with it. You know, merci de me le donner. Okay. Thank you for having given it me. So we know thanking somebody rather than asking in advance because notice merci without the auxiliary form often takes on a please method. So thank you for having given it me. Thank you for giving it me would often is what we'd say in English as well. Merci de me l'avoir donné. So merci and de can go into the version with no auxiliary and it can go into the version with the past. Merci de me l'avoir donné. Um, um, I'm happy. I'm happy to buy myself some. Do you own any? No, but I'm happy to buy myself some. Some, 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 some. I'm happy to buy myself some. Je suis content de mon acheter. M apostrophe en acheter infinitive. You know, I'm happy that I bought myself some. Je suis content de mon être acheté in the past tense with any acheté agreeing with any what anything you've bought you know uh, um, um, no sorry not with that. apologies ignore 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 i'm thinking of the lay so um this is linking to something i've said before which is as a general rule if you have two expression if you have an expression which would otherwise create the subjunctive and the same person crops up either side of the cup so for example i am happy that you are here all of you why je suis content que vous soyez là because it's an emotion and that creates the subjunctive after a cup again stop if you don't understand that please go Type subjunctive into my YouTube, the link will come up. So I'm happy that you're here. Je suis content que vous soyez là. I'm happy that I'm here. Je suis content d'être là. I don't want to be saying that I am here. I am happy that I'm here because that would create a subjunctive. So it's nicer French to say, je suis, ouais, je suis content d'être là. De plus a verb. I'm happy, to, I'm happy to do it. I'm happy you're doing it. Ouais, je suis content que tu le fasses. I'm happy that I'm doing it. Je suis content de le faire. De plus the normal verb. But what if I was talking about the past? I'm happy that you did it. Je suis content que tu l'aies fait. Auxiliary in the middle. I'm happy, um, I'm happy that I did it. Je suis content de l'avoir fait. My auxiliary infinitive. Okay? So there's lots of words and phrases which do need the, uh, you know, the, um, the auxiliary infinitive. Uh, so, uh, so we've got some, yeah, I just typed as a token example into um, uh, Reverso. Shout out to Stuart who got me onto Reverso. So, uh, so where are we? So, après avoir établi un, un système, so after establishing a system, de vérification, a son être occupé and having dealt with it for you know nearly 12 years yeah so après son être occupé yeah um before dealing with it avant de son occupé yeah just before dealing with it you know s'occuper de takes the pronoun en because of the de so avant de son occupé if you don't understand how the on is being used here next reference type en en into the YouTube. Look at it when it says using on and e with reflexive verbs. Yeah, look at using on and e with the reflexive verbs or I will find you the link. Okay, so for example, I'm going to deal with it. Je vais m'en occuper. After dealing with it, me personally, après mon être occupé. Yeah, um, yeah. so as a basic rule then, let's just do some chanting um let's just do some uh examples of some verb verbs in this method so let's do some basic verbs first so let's just say let's just say we use parler with with, with to so using my model to parle to so we're using was will would subjunctive please notice was will would is alphabetical that often evades a lot of people they're like oh god yeah by the way i painted the background blue let me know who likes it yeah, it went to a lot of trouble. <laughs> if you like Luke, it makes no difference. But if you like it, let me know. 
Um, uh, yes, uh, yeah. Uh, there's other pictures of art. There's other, there's other pictures of art. <laughs> there's other sea style pictures here. Um, so, um, yeah, that's why I went with the blue. But I didn't want the blue to rob from the artwork. Um, yeah. Um, so, let's go. Tu parles, you speak. Tu parles, you were speaking. Tu parleras, you will speak. Tu parlerais, you would speak. A-I-S. Whatever, I'm happy that you speak. Je suis content que tu parles. Subjunctive. You know, present subjunctive. Straight away there. Now, you can either do all of them and then do the two infinitives at the end, but I would really rather you get into the usage of doing, get into the habit of doing. Present was, will, would subjunctive. Auxiliary free. Sub, uh, infinitive, just normal infinitive. So present was, will, would, subjunctive, infinitive, with no auxiliary, and then present was, will, would, subjunctive, infinitive, with an auxiliary. So tu parles, tu parlais, tu parleras, tu parlerais, c'est bizarre, uh, je suis content que tu parles, was the example I'm using. Tu vas parler, okay? For example, tu as parlé, with auxiliaries, tu avais parlé, tu auras parlé, tu aurais parlé, ouais, je suis content que tu aies parlé, Après avoir parlé, you did something else. So the two basic versions. Let's remember one final really important fact before carrying on. When you conjugate all of these first five in the top row, that's with no auxiliary, and this first five in the bottom row with, no, with, with the auxiliary, when you then get onto the auxiliary ones, that's number six of each section, there isn't one model. There are numerous ways to access an auxiliary and to access an infinitive with an auxiliary. That's the point I'm making. You're going to need it on different things. There's only one way of using tu with pal. There's only one way of using that in all of those ten tenses. Um, there's not one way of using parler with tu in the infinitive. Tu vas parler, tu peux parler, tu sais parler, tu essaies de parler. Okay? Uh, lovely. My friend is telling me he's back from um, his holidays in Italy. Um, uh, likewise with the auxiliary infinitive. Yeah, there's multiple ways to go into it as we've discussed. So let's do another one. Let's this time do one with the pronoun le. So let's say you, 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 you buy it. Tu l'achètes, tu l'achetais, tu l'achèteras, tu l'achèterais. Ouais, je suis content que tu l'achètes. Infinitive, tu vas l'acheter. Computer needs to be quiet. Tu vas l'acheter. Tu l'as acheté, tu l'avais acheté, tu l'auras acheté, tu l'aurais acheté. Ouais, je suis content que tu l'aies acheté. Après, l'avoir acheté. I added the pronoun before the avoir. OK? Let's do a B1. Il part, il partait, il partira, il partirait. Moi, je suis ravi qu'il parte. I'm thrilled he's leaving. Il va partir. Number six, infinitive. Il est parti, il était parti. Il sera parti, il serait parti. Je suis ravi qu'il soit parti. Après être parti, he did this. Now, remember, we can only use these après models, can I remind you, if it's the same person. Yeah, if it was a different person, Lachlan Carton, please check, make sure you've done this for next week. Um, you would obviously need après que. Now let's bring in some reflexives. Let's say um, je and yeah, get washed. Um, je me lave, je me lavais, je me laverai, je me laverai. The wood sounds the same, really, pretty much. Je me laverai, uh, ouais. Il est content que je me lave. Je vais me laver, pronoun before the laver. Je me suis lavé, je m'étais lavé, je me serais lavé, je me serais lavé with an AIS. Um, il est content que je me sois lavé. Après, mettre lavé. Notice I'm popping all my pronouns, be it just one, the reflexive, or be it whatever, then the verb to be or the verb to have. It's obviously going to be the verb to be, isn't it? If you've just done je me suis, je m'étais, je me serais, you know that reflexives take the verb to be. Lovely. Um, après mettre lavé. Let's do a phrasal. Um, s'en aller. Yeah. S'en aller. 
let's do it uh vous vous this is always a nasty one no let's use en en it's a bit more common in that way no i'm not saying vous isn't common but let's let, let's just use en on s'en va on s'en allait on s'en ira on s'en irait il est content qu'on s'en aille subjunctive on va s'en aller what which pronouns have we heard in on va s'en aller on s'en est acheté on s'en est apostrophe en était acheté ou on s'en était acheté on s'en sera acheté on s'en serait acheté on s'en serait acheté if you did the link c'est intéressant qu'on s'en soit acheté so the auxiliary sorry i missed that infinitive the top one on va s'en aller après s'en être allé okay i've done it with an après there to go into the after so a system i gave my people the other day in the class you'd have seen nina you'd have seen um susan great girls doing really well uh you maggie wasn't there this week was she no um i said to them that to practice this fully if you practice the infinitive with no auxiliary with an avant de and a je the or a, that person in go so for example if you come across a phrase or verb you know um you know he's going to be interested in it or something you know il va s'y intéresser il s'y intéresse il s'y intéressé il s'y intéressera il s'y intéressera c'est intéressant qu'il voilà je suis content qu'il s'y intéresse um il va s'y intéresser so practice it with you know avant de s'y intéresser or avant de s'en occuper so practice it with avant de it could be with anything it could be with merci de it could be with avant de it could be with whatever je suis con il est content de all of these versions that we've mentioned that will be written in the description underneath you can practice the auxiliary with no the, the infinitive with no auxiliary but my main two to practice just do it with the token go and do it with the token avant de whereas when you get to the auxiliary with the infinitive yeah practice it after a token après going into the past assuming it's the same person or a practice with a token i don't know a song or something without having done this thing so here's a better little challenge now i'm going to give you some verbs and you're going to go straight into the two infinitives okay um sans dormir now be careful this is another video another video Somebody told me I'd written this out wrong in this video the other day, and unless I was absolutely space caked off my fucking rocker on gluten, I, I can't imagine why, but I trust the person if I'd written it out wrong or said something slowly. But sonelli is S apostrophe E in space A double L E R, and son dormir is S apostrophe E N D O R I M I R, or one verb. Son voler is S apostrophe E N V O L E R, or one verb. So it's like Sometimes when you have a son, the on is a separate word, and sometimes when you have an on, the on isn't. Why is that significant? Because if you have, for example, son dormir, and the on is part of the verb, he fell asleep, il s'est endormi. There's no, there's no on as a pronoun, it's part of the verb. So après s'être endormi, for example. If it were on aller with son aller with on as a separate pronoun it would be il va son aller après son être allé or il s'en est allé and then yeah so it would have an on as a separate con concept so i'm going to give you some verbs simple or not and you're going to stick it in the infinitive without the uh, pronoun shut up luke you're going to stick it in the infinitive with no auxiliary and then you're going to then you're going to stick it in the infinitive with an auxiliary so let's say buy yourselves some to buy yourself some vous allez vous en acheter after buying yourself some Après vous en être acheté. Yeah? Now you might go, why is that reflexive? Because we're not buying ourselves in some kinky online auction. Been there, done that. Uh, you would do, um, it's because you're buying it for yourself. And for yourself is a re re reflexive as well. So for example, vous allez vous en acheter. Vous devez vous en acheter. Avant de vous en acheter. Versus après vous en avoir acheté, 
Euh, voilà, voilà, après, vous en êtes racheté. Kill me, kill me. Um, <rire> um, uh, going slowly doesn't help. And I don't mean that insultingly because I can't do your jobs. Um, yeah, je suis con vous êtes content de vous en être racheté. I always remember, I always, I always tell this story. So Mika, the pop star, uh, speaks great French. He's got a, a Lebanese background. And he was in... He was one of the judges on La Voix, le, uh, the, the Voice, La Plus Belle Voix, which is the French uh, version of The Voice TV show, you know, when they spin around before they see what the person looks like. And I remember him saying, you know, après ma voix rendu compte, and the audience went, oh, because even though you're realizing something else, because it's a reflexive verb, although indirect rather than direct, it's après mon être rendu compte, for example. Or well, après m'être rendu compte. I can't remember whether it had an on in it or not, but he definitely said m'avoir rendu compte. Good. Uh, let's do that one then. Let's do, okay, so to realise it. And let's do it with a tu. So I want some form of an infinitive without an auxiliary, with, uh, with a, without an auxiliary, with a, uh, a tu and realise. Realise it. Realise it. Tu vas t'en rendre compte. Tu vas t'en rendre compte. Tu veux t'en rendre compte, tu dois t'en rendre compte, avant de t'en rendre compte. Let's now do the auxiliary infinitive. Après ton être rendu compte, sans ton être rendu compte. All right? uh, giving them to them. Giving them to them. Okay? And a she. So she, giving them, let's say the sweets, to the kids. Give the kids sugar, obviously, that's a good idea. Um, so, elle va les leur donner. Elle va les leur donner. Infinitive with no auxiliary. Oui, elle va les leur donner. Elle va les leur donner. If you don't know the order of double infinitives together, can I remind you the, the well, there's, you could just watch a video on this, but I'm quite prepared to reteach this. Um, there's a, so, the formal French system says, and I'm all for formal at times, and I'm very, certainly for, all for French, and I like a system, but the formal French system is going to go, oh, the direct is going to go before the proceed the indirect. Um, uh, um, no, the indirect is going to proceed the direct with the exception of the third people. And you just think, or Lukey's system. On and E always go at the end, regardless. Okay? If you've got on and E, which is quite possible, il y en a, then obviously you know that on goes after e. If not, you have um, uh, if there's two together, the one with an. Let's see if the finger goes the right way around. So the l word one. If there's one l, the l will go la la last. Okay, la 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 last. Nobody make a gif of that and send it me. I don't want to see that. <laughs> so the L one will go uh, last. So for example, il me le donne, il te les donne, je vous les donne, whatever. If there's two L words, the uh, longer L word goes last. So le lui, la leur, les leur, whatever, the longer L word goes last. All right? Good, let's do one more. So let's do the one we did earlier, which was resent. Okay, Luke has given us lots of things to learn, okay? We resent him. So can I have the infinitive of resenting him? Yeah, so on va, lui en vouloir, lui en vouloir, okay? The auxiliary infinitive, it's an on to a lui, so there's nothing, nothing reflexive about it. Après lui en avoir voulu, okay? Um... Here's a couple of little hints to take you to take away with. If your verb is, if you need to find the auxiliary and you can't think what the auxiliary is, just think, well, what was the heat, what was the passé composé version of that? So if you were going to the bottom six, so if you said, on lui en veut, on lui en voulait, on lui en voudra, on lui en voudrait, c'est bizarre qu'on lui en veuille, on lui en a, am I on the right thing, on lui en, on lui en, yeah, on lui en veut, on lui en voulait, on lui en voudra, on lui en voudrait. C'est bizarre qu'on lui... Voilà, je suis content qu'on lui en veuille. On lui en a voulu, on lui en avait voulu, yada, yada, yada. Notice that you'll have the on, lui, on, a. And that will remind you what the auxiliaries have or be. Likewise, notice if you come from all the other ones with an auxiliary, 
So, on lui en a voulu, on lui en avait voulu, on lui en aura voulu, on lui en aurait voulu. Voilà, lui il est ravi qu'on lui en ait voulu. We've had voulu there, so your auxiliary infinitive will be après lui en avoir voulu. Same thing, because if you have an infinitive, if you have an auxiliary, be it infinitive or not, in the auxiliary, if you have an auxiliary, what an auxiliary guarantees you is a bloody past participle afterwards. That's how it works. Final thoughts. If you happened to have a previous direct object, a, a complement objet direct, and if you don't understand what that is, I will also pop that underneath. I know I'm so generous. Please forget, please don't forget that there's a coffee link underneath. Apparently it's got a little bit more difficult to buy me a coffee because you Somebody said you can't just do it now. You have to sign in with a PayPal account. I'm not sure. Please let me know how that goes. Please let me know the following. Please let me know if this has been really useful versus frightening. Do please tell me that. So write your answers underneath. Right. Answer to question one. Useful or not. Frightening or not. Answer to question two. Do we like the blue? Not painting it back to Magnolia now, but do we like the blue? Question number three. Uh, do you want the podcast for the A-level revision? Because they're fucking brilliant. Question number four. Um, what's the question number four that I wanted? I can't remember. That might have been the main point, but never mind. Anyway, <laughs> yeah. So in other words, par, par, the whole thing that this is going to do is focus on the fact that you are using. Oh, yes, 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 yes. The preceding direct object. So I will pop the link to that. So compliment, often known as compliment objet direct. So, for example, he has bought them. Il les a achetés. Yeah, il les a achetés with an extra e. S on the end if they were feminine plural or an S if they were sing if they were just masculine plural. So you do need to know these things. So for example, if you said after buying them, après les avoir achetés, because you've got a foot. So that people always say, oh yes, that previous direct object, that is something you use if you're in the passé composé. Yes, if you're at GCSE or sort of 16 year old exams, but if you're anywhere else, it is any other tense, any other tense where you have the uh, past participle. So if I say, for example, the music, you know, you've heard it. So you hear it, tu l'entends. No, no agreement, no past participle. Tu l'entendais. No, tu l'entendras. No, tu l'entendrais. No, tu l'entendrais. Where are we going? Um, que tu l'entendes, subjunctive, no. Tu l'as entendu. Yes, feminine music there, because there's a past participle. Tu l'avais entendu. Yes, there, because there's a past participle. Tu l'auras entendu. Yes, there's an extra E on the end there, because there's a past fucking participle. Tu l'aurais entendu. Yes, because there's one there. Um, whatever. Je suis ravi que tu l'aies entendu. Yes, even the subjunctive distracting your brains, there's still, there's still, um, there's still one there. Um, après l'avoir entendu. Yes, there's one there. Because it is a past participle. If we went into the book tenses, you know, tu entendis. Um, uh, if you don't understand the passé simple, there's a video on it, let me know. Uh, passé intérieur, tu, you know, eu, don't worry if you've not come across it, entendis. Uh, so, entendu, pardon, tu eu entendu. Um, you had imperfect subjunctive. Um, what am I saying? Um, to entend. No, we're into the imperfect subjunctive. We don't need that entendu. That's not got an auxiliary. So, um, uh, plus perfect subjunctive. To us entendu. If you're thinking, what the shit is he talking about? Watch the videos on the literary tenses. Um, there's one there. Every single tense in French that has a auxiliary. And a past tense, if there's a preceding direct object, there'll be an in and S. And if you really, really, really wanted to be like a massive geek, I mean like a massive, massive geek, um, you'd acknowledge then that we, we haven't just got six. You could kind of carry on. You could say that we've got eight tenses, really, although some of them are so, so rare, because if, that, if we then added the four literary ones that are taught still, then you've got two more with an auxiliary and two more without an auxiliary on the end of that. So here endeth the lesson, if I did this one then. So if I said, he speaks, so you don't have to do this, but this is what it would be. Il parle, il parle, il parlait, il parlera, il parlerait, whatever, I'm happy, qu'il parle, subjunctive. Yeah? 
Il va parler. Um, infinitive. Il. What do I need? I need two without the two more without the auxiliary. Il parla. Passé simple. Yeah. P a r l a. Uh, qui parlas. Imperfect subjunctive. Yeah. Il a parlé. Passé composé. Il avait parlé. Plus que parfait. Il aura parlé. Future past. Il aurait parlé. Voilà, je suis ravi qu'il ait parlé. Infinitive, après l'avoir parlé, there's your infinitive auxiliary. Il, what are we doing? So, il eut parlé, passé intérieur. Il eut, with a hat on it. Yeah, not eus, because it's the third person, parlé. Your plus perfect subjunctive. Rare, but there you go. So, yes, so that it really would match up. So, in other words, auxiliaries is the name of the game. Auxiliaries is the name of the game. So well done. I did tell you it was an advanced video, but very, 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 very useful. Very, very useful. Very useful. Very useful indeed. Very useful indeed. Good. There's some reading for you to do. There's some watching for you to do. There's some listening for you to do. If you found this useful, please do note that I do have a coffee account. Uh, the A-level podcasts, I cannot recommend them enough. Do please let me know. Yeah, it, it really is like 595, 600 questions and me explaining every single one and all of it's great for A-level grammar or high school leaving grammar or just general advanced grammar. It's really good. Um, there's some fiendish ones in there. It's a bit like a Sudoku. Um, lovely. I hope you're very well, guys. Hope you like the blue. Hope you like the blue. <laughs> Do let me know. It's one of the formal questions. And I am going to go out now and have a drink and, um, yeah, and see some friends. All right. Well then, guys. <laughs>